Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, public uh, Zoom webinar for the Scott Street uh, bus detour construction for the LRT project. My name is Tom Peckloff. I work on all transportation files in the office of uh, Kitchissippi Councillor Jeff Leeper, who is also here with us uh, this evening. We also have Jessica Maxwell from uh, Stakeholder Relations, uh, Campbell Inwood, who is the uh, program manager for LRT traffic management. And uh, uh, Bowden Zvonarich, uh, who is the Traffic Transit Coordinator. So um, this will be a fairly uh, simple process this evening. We start with a presentation from Jessica. Uh, and once the presentation is over, we open it up to questions and answers. Now, with the webinar format, um, the best way for you to get your questions, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you can see participants where we're at 26 and right beside it is the q a you click on that and then you can post your questions there and then once uh once jessica's presentation is complete uh we will go through all the questions i will read them out and we'll get as many answers for you tonight as we possibly can and uh, any answers that are not available tonight will come to you uh, as soon as they are available. So uh, without further ado, I turn it over to uh, Jessica Maxwell from Stakeholder Relations. Thanks, Tom. So I'll go ahead and start the process of sharing my screen to get the presentation up. Right, there we go. Did that change for you? Yep, it looks good. Okay, perfect. So good evening, everyone. Bonsoir à tous. Uh, like Tom said, uh, the aim of tonight's info session is to go over the ongoing construction of the Scott Street Transitway Detour. My name is Jessica Maxwell, and I'm with the City of Ottawa's Stage 2 LRT Stakeholder Relations Team. I'm joined tonight by my um, rail construction colleagues from the traffic management team, Campbell and Bowden. The agenda for tonight's, um, lost my train of thought, sorry. <laughs> the agenda for this evening is quite simple. Uh, I'll be providing an overview of the Scott Street Transitway Detour construction before moving to answering your questions about this work. So between the Tunney's Pastor and Dominion Station, work has begun to prepare for the transitway detour along Scott Street, which will begin in June of next year. So June, 2022. The Scott Street transitway detour will allow for construction of the train guideway and tracks to begin within the existing transitway trench. Station construction will also begin next year. So in this area, construction of the new Westboro station will also start in June, 2022, and construction on Kijisibi station will start in July. The bulk of the Scott Street Transitway detour construction will be completed in the fall of this year. So in June 2022, the transitway between Tunney's Pasture and Dominion stations will close, which will result in buses operating in general traffic along Scott Street between Tunney's Pasture Station and Churchill Avenue. Scott Street is being widened to accommodate an exclusive eastbound transit lane for buses between Lanark Avenue and Island Park Drive. West of Churchill Avenue, Scott Street will be extended as a temporary transitway roadway to the existing Dominion Station. The transit only roadway will be on the south side of the existing transitway until a point just east of Roosevelt Avenue, at which point it will cross to the north side of the existing transitway while staying south of Workman Avenue until it meets the SJAM Parkway in the vicinity of the existing Dominion Station. During the transitway detour, uh, the Westboro Station stops will also be relocated onto Scott Street. So here we have on this slide an east-facing aerial image of currently the Dominion Station area. 
So Dominion Station will adopt Kitchisibi as its new LRT station name. For the overview of construction today, I will be moving from west to east. So starting with the uh, existing Dominion Station area and moving east along Scott towards Tenney's Pasture. So as part of the detour, the Roosevelt Pedestrian Bridge was removed on June 19th in order to allow for the construction of the temporary bus bridge. While I know that the loss of this pedestrian bridge for this detour is certainly a blow to the connectivity in the neighborhood, I did see that many folks were able to marvel at the removal of the bridge itself. It was quite a, an intricate operation. The construction of the new bus bridge foundation and its supports is underway at the location of the former pedestrian bridge. Uh, caissons have been installed for the new bus, bus bridge, and we are expecting the bridge platform to be installed sometime in September. The installation of the bus bridge platform is expected to be a multi-day operation, and the details of this and any of its impacts will be communicated once they are finalized. Post construction of LRT and the, the train entering service, the Roosevelt Pedestrian Bridge will be reinstated in its original alignment. The construction of the bus only roadway, which will run between Churchill Avenue and the SJM Parkway is roughly 30% complete right now and the roadway is expected to be completed by mid-October. The stripping of the topsoil and construction of the subgrade for the temporary roadway has started on both sides of the existing transitway. A temporary multi-use pathway has been paved around the construction site on the south side of the transitway which is ensuring that the connection between Dominion Station and Churchill Avenue is preserved. So moving to the section between Churchill and Athlone Avenues, work is underway along the south side of Scott Street and work in this section is expected to be complete by late August. The majority of the bulb outs, the sidewalk and curb on the south side have now been removed. Once all of the removals are complete, a granular layer and sub drains will be installed, which will be followed by sidewalk and curb reinstatements before the contractor moves on to the paving of the cycle track and ultimately the final reinstatements. This sequencing of work as outlined on this slide is generally how things are going to proceed in all of the sections as the contractor and work moves eastward towards Tunney's Pasture. So between Athlone Avenue and Island Park Drive, work is expected to begin uh, early to mid-August. And in this area, the pedestrian space on the south side between Tweedsmere and Clifton Avenues is going to be is going to remain open throughout the construction to ensure that the connection between Westboro Station and the Farm Boy on McRae Avenue is preserved. Obviously, a big destination, those sort of alternate towers. So making sure that 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 is open has definitely been a priority. Between Island Park Drive and Tunney's Pasture, Work is expected to begin in mid-August and be completed in October. The sidewalk on the south side in this area will be removed and reinstated in its original location with the eastbound cycle track installed between the vehicle lane and the sidewalk. At Goldenrod Bridge, uh, work is nearing completion and is expected to be complete in September. So as I mentioned at the beginning, the bulk of the construction of the Scott Street Transitway Detour facilities is expected to be completed in the fall of this year. The information on this slide provides an overview of what the completion of this construction will mean for area residents. 
So the, the following enhancements for pedestrians and cyclists will be ready to use upon completion of the detour construction. So between Churchill Avenue and Tunney's Pasture, the multi-use pathway on the north side of Scott Street will have been widened to four meters and have been resurfaced. And this work is expected to be completed in November. On the south side of Scott Street, the sidewalks will be reinstated and an eastbound direction cycle track will have been installed. Two new signalized protected intersections will be built as part of detour construction. However, the signals are not going to be activated or turned on until the detour starts next June. These new intersections will be located at uh, Scott Street and Churchill Avenue, as well as Scott Street, um, where the Goldenrod, Goldenrod Bridge meets the road and Smurl Avenue. And uh, finally, other changes that are going to be implemented are, as I mentioned, uh, the slight widening of Scott Street between Lanark Avenue and Island Park Drive to provide a bus only eastbound lane in that section. And the Westboro station stops with a bus layup area will be relocated onto Scott Street just west of uh, where the existing station is located. In terms of construction impacts, as usual, the majority of this work is taking place from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. There may be intermittent overnight and weekend work. Weekend work is confirmed on Fridays and shared with any affected counselor. And overnight work requires the delivery of a notice in advance. Hard copy notices are delivered to properties closest to the work zone. And the notice is also delivered electronically to subscribers of the project newsletter. In terms of connectivity impacts, all pedestrian, cycling, bus, and vehicular movements will generally be maintained during construction. Some pedestrian and cyclist detours may require a few additional minutes of travel time. But, uh, the counselor, Tom, and the stage two team, so myself and Bowden and Campbell, we are actively working to reduce as much as possible any detour cause delays and confusion for pedestrians and cyclists. So since this work is ongoing, there's already a, a couple of things that, that we're working on and trying to make in trying to make things easier for uh, the different active transportation methods. So uh, we're nearing the start of the Q&A period, really want to keep uh, the bulk of time for that. Uh, so just a few things to note before we move on. Um, this slide deck is going to be made available on the Kitchissippi Ward website. And any questions uh, that we received in advance or that remain outstanding following this evening will be answered and also uh, posted and shared on the Kitchissippi Ward website. Uh, the stage two team, if you, you know, think of a question after we say goodbye this evening, can be reached at stage two at ottawa.ca. And to subscribe to the project newsletter, please visit ottawa.ca slash stage two connect and follow the prompts. And uh, with that, I'll hand things back over to you, Tom. Okay. Thank you very much. And I see for starters here, two questions. And I'm sure we'll, there will be uh, more, uh, but we will start with a question from Stephen Davidson. Uh, for the section of the temporary transit way south of Workman Avenue, what type of sound privacy fence will be installed along Workman? Will it be high enough for residents to have privacy and to block light from the double-decker buses? So I can't give a complete answer to that question because some elements of the design of the noise mitigation measures are still being worked on. And one of the things still being worked on is making sure that it is high enough to make sure that it also mitigates the impact from double-decker buses. 
Okay, thank you. Next question from uh, Kimberly Patrickwin. We were supposed to get more than two signalized protected intersections, including one at Island Park. Why is this not included in this project? So I think, um, I think, you know, Campbell, go, go for it if you want to. Hi there, Tom. Uh, and hi, Kimberly. I was just uh, finishing my, uh, my typed out answer as uh, the question came up. So um, uh, in short, Jessica mentioned two new intersections. The, they're locations that aren't currently uh, signalized. They will be built as protected intersections. The existing signalized intersections that are being addressed are also being uh, made protected intersections, and so that would include the locations at Lanark and at Island Park. Um, I think we're making some modifications to the signal at Carlton um, that include crossroads. I don't know if it's getting the full Monty, as it were, um, but uh, certainly all the signalized intersections are being addressed as previously communicated. So oh, Island Park will be signalized? It is today. Oh, sorry, not signalized, um, uh, protected? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. indeed it will. And then the signal, uh, the existing signal that's just East Smurl, where the bus loop exits onto uh, to Scott Street today, that will be removed once it's no longer needed. So basically it's a one-for-one -one swap. Okay. Uh, and if I may, uh, Campbell and Bowden, the um, questions that go into the Q&A, we'll answer those verbally as they come up, because uh, we don't have any way of making sure that those questions get seen by people who may be watching uh, this, uh, this product on uh, YouTube down the road if they're answered privately. That makes a lot of sense, Councillor. We'll, uh, we'll do it that way. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Our next question, just curious about the rationale for having a dedicated bus lane on the eastbound direction. Not a, not a criticism, but uh, wondering why a dedicated lane on both directions wasn't deemed necessary. I think I'll let Campbell or Bowden take that one so, as well. This is a, a, an excellent question, uh, one that I um, have a lot of background on and, and a lot of... Um, thoughts about so stop me when I get into too much detail but effectively um, we did a very very thorough analysis of all the different alternatives um, when we were at the preliminary engineering phase of this project various routes we could take to our buses um, and where we were spending our money most wisely in terms of modifications to the roadway in terms of what we get back from reducing OC transpose additional operating costs and their additional capital costs in terms of when they need to buy more buses to serve the same demand because now the routes will take slightly longer. So a whole bunch of numbers went into it and we selected the one that was optimized for the smallest number of dollars. And that ended up being um, the sort of hybrid approach whereby we only add the, uh, the eastbound lane basically because we got more benefit out of that direction than we did out of the westbound one and when the construction cost was compared to the additional oc transport operating capital cost this was the the cheapest for the taxpayer okay excellent thank you um uh, it looks like the next three questions are probably closely related we'll start with the first one on workmen there is a long fenced area. Is there a plan to have a longer pedestrian path or sidewalk on workmen? There is no sidewalk on workmen, and so pedestrians are required to walk on the street. So for the first part of that question about the area that was recently fenced up uh, east of where the um, pedestrian bridge alignment was to Churchill Avenue. Um, we are still trying to, or I am still trying to figure out with our construction team why that fence was put up because it does take away an area that pedestrians have traditionally used along Workmen. So I don't know. I know, like you mentioned, Tom, the next sort of three questions are yeah. asking the same thing. So why the fence is there? Uh, I don't know that yet, but we're going to find out that answer and ultimately try and have it taken down if it's not serving a um, objective purpose. purpose. Yeah. 
All right, the next one, a workman has become more dangerous since the construction fences have been installed. Uh, with the cars that are parked along workmen and now the fences, pedestrians are walking in the middle of the road. Cars are also driving down the middle of the road due to the parked cars and the large puddles and plants on the north side of workmen. What can be done to improve safety? So I can take a stab at this one. Uh, so essentially, Kev has been uh, has monitored the counts of pedestrians uh, using using workmen uh, over the past week or so. They are getting the results over to us, and uh, we're looking into see what can be done to uh, improve pedestrian safety now that the Roosevelt Bridge is not in place. Can I just okay. ask is a is a segregated uh, pathway for pedestrians still on the table? I know we spoke about it to begin. We, we said we'd see how it went. Um, I'm still not convinced that we don't need one. Forgive the double negative there. Uh, is that still a potential? Because even with the grass strip restored in the wintertime, that is snow storage and, and unusable by pedestrians. So I think ultimately, Council, we're going to uh, look at the data that uh, we've received um, from the contractor and sort of render an opinion as to, to what's required based on the vehicular demand, the pedestrians and cyclists we're seeing and other demands for, for the space. Hopefully removing this fence will solve uh, much of the problem. But you know, it, it's not going to be our, our first choice to pursue a segregated country simply because of um, finances. We don't have a mechanism that I'm aware of um, to have the contractor do that without having it be a costly contract variation. Uh, so it's everything is on the table um, until we do our, our analysis and are able to sort of render a better, uh, more focused recommendation for you. It's it's been um, it's been a bit since I asked us to take a second look at that. Uh, sooner would be better than than later. Uh, absolutely, and we uh, I think we got our traffic count data from them just this afternoon. So we're gonna okay look at that um, internally with Tom, and we'll certainly be in touch with you. Okay, I just want to um, uh, caution residents. I, I'm not invested in any given solution here. I just want it to be safe. Uh, if we do wind up removing parking to put a segregated uh, lane in, it probably does mean pushing some of that Van Lang and contractor parking off into the side streets. So there's a bit of a trade off there. But like I say, I'm I'm not invested in, in any one given solution and I'm very open minded at the moment. OK, thank you. And that, I mean, that leads to the next uh, question here. Why is parking still allowed uh, along Workman? South side of uh, the street close to Churchill with the installation of the middle fences, no other option for pedestrians to walk in the street. As we all uh, just heard Campbell say, everything is on the table right now. Uh, and that is certainly one of the options. Uh, Diego Garcia writes, uh, hi, we would like access to our pre-construction surveys. There was a letter sent by DST in January of 2020, which was not received by many neighbors on Dominion and Berkeley. We are directly impacted by construction within 100 meters. How do we get a copy of our pre-construction surveys? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, I have been corresponding with Dr. Garcia, and actually I did hear back from the contractor, so I am uh, owing a response right now, so we'll try and get that out uh, tomorrow. But um, there is a new detail here that actually is helpful to me, so the response I had in mind might not apply anymore, that um, the letters from DST were not received by some people. I was not aware of that circumstance, so I'll be in touch um, with Dr. Garcia and we'll take it from there. Okay, that sounds good. So, it was a good question. What does protected intersection mean? For Campbell or Bowden, I, I think it's, yeah. Yeah, I can, uh, yeah, I can take this one. Uh, essentially, a, a protected intersection phases out the sequencing of the intersection so that pedestrian and cyclists have uh, separate phases from uh, general traffic, uh, provides better sight lines, more safety for pedestrians. 
and yeah, overall a better intersection. So it's to uh, increase the cyclist and pedestrian safety. I hope I answered that one all right. Hang on, from my perspective, the only thing that I would note for crystal clarity, because that's the kind of guy I am, uh, the geomet it's really a geometric change to the intersection. It's, it's um, which is to say it facilitates if you wanted to have separate phasing for vehicles and uh, pedestrians, it makes it easier to do that, but you don't always do that. And in fact, we we won't hear. So normally when you get a green light, the head eastbound on Scott, the pedestrians can cross the cross street at the same time. Uh, and so that's, you know, the way we will do that. Um, so I don't want everybody to think that the pedestrians are gonna have a completely separate phase from all vehicles, but it's a safer geometric design that can also be used to facilitate that if need be. But thanks, Bodo. Um, there is a chat. Okay, uh, I am, uh, I'm gonna post some of my favorite pictures of protected intersections uh, as we go in the uh, chat. So I'll have some links up there for folks who wanna see them. Okay, perfect. From Anne Grundy, could you please clarify if the sidewalk cycle track on the south side of Scott Street from Oakdale East uh, from the sewer work from last year there's been installed over the past several months the work still being completed uh, is that being redone again in the fall it seems repetitive so no it is not being redone it but what has been installed over the past couple of months that is essentially what the rest of the corridor will look like it's just that the areas where that has not been installed, stage two is going to come in and take care of installing that. Whereas with this sort of, I'll call it a, a regular city project, it was, was taken on through that. And Robinson, um, maybe a, a, a typo on this, but, um, I was wondering when Dominion State or Kitchissippi Station uh, is on track for the construction to begin. Obviously, not March twenty twenty one because we're we're past that. Um, but just uh, if we can uh, sort of reiterate that when when that construction will begin. Yes. So construction of the new Kitchissippi LRT station will start in July two thousand twenty two. So a year from now we can expect construction to have started at Kitchissippi Station. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Don Crockford asks, uh, in the original plan, Scott Street at Island Park westbound intersection was going to be widened for car traffic to exit onto Island Park headed for the Champlain Bridge. Is that still going to happen? So I can take that one. So headed Scott Street or westbound on Scott Street, there will be a uh, right turn channel that uh, allows you to exit onto Island Park Drive. Okay. Uh, and Brian Miller, just a, a comment here, just to be clear, this issue existed before the fences went up. He's talking about workmen and pedestrians uh, 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 on the road, I believe. Um, issue existed before the fences went up and before the bridge was taken down. It's just worse now. So thank you. It was duly noted on that. Uh, more comments from Workman. I concur with the councillor. Sidewalk is required not just for the short term, but the long term. Pedestrian safety should not be a budget issue. Uh, Don Crockford, we are almost through the water main and sewer rehabilitation project. Final piece of work was supposed to be a complete repaving from Island Park to Ross Avenue. Is that still a go? I'm assuming that complete repaving would refer to a complete repaving resurfacing of the roadway. I, I am not sure if that's still part of that project. I can find out unless someone else here knows the answer for sure. I am comfortable enough to hazard a guess um, that it is not going to be a part of that project because the resurfacing of the entire corridor on Scott Street from Churchill to Smurl 
is in the scope of the LRT contract. So what almost certainly would have occurred is that um, we would have removed that scope from the current city contract for the water main sewer in order to get more value out of that contract uh, for the taxpayer and just do the work once under um, our project. So Campbell, do you know if then that will be happening towards the end of detour construction or only after the detour is lifted and the train is in service? Oh, it will be prior to the detour going into service. Um, and that is basically because, uh, you know, when we're running that, the, the bus is down there, we want it to be on as good of a surface as possible. Um, and we also don't want to have to go in and repair the road when we're also using it for, uh, for buses. So yes, the road will be completely resurfaced prior to the beginning of the detour. Whether that will happen um, towards the end of Are you still there, Campbell? It looks like he's still here, but we've lost his audio. Sounds like what he was getting to say was that he was unsure if it the resurfacing oh. would be oh, happening. Oh, I think he's back. Yeah, oh. yeah. I, I just got booted out for a minute. I apologize. Uh, but effectively, if there is an issue with the road surface in the area where the rehabilitation project is now, that's not going to get addressed before winter. Uh, by our project, then they will do the, the remediation that's necessary to make sure it's good enough for winter. And then we will do the serious scope of the full repaving um, next, uh, next spring, but hopefully they get it all done before winter. I just don't know. Okay. Uh, next up from Stephen Davidson. When will the final plans be available for Workman Avenue and the new station? For example, the landscaping, sidewalks, utility pool location to be moved back to the station side of Workman after construction, street parking rules, etc. Will any consultation with residents be done before these details are finalized? So there are no plans as part of the stage two project to make any permanent changes to Workman Avenue, the street, where Kitchissippi Station will be built. The station entrance plaza will have you know, pedestrian and cycling facilities connecting into it, but nothing along the whole entire length of Workman, for example. So in terms of the final design or plans for that Kijisabi uh, station area and the station entrance plaza. I don't believe there is a, a comprehensive package that is finalized and able to be shared with the public, but I definitely do have at least some, some tidbits of the, the plans and certainly some photorealistic renderings. And we actually just got some updated ones uh, a couple of weeks ago. So that uh, we could certainly, Tom, put together yep. and include as one of those written responses to be put on the website. Absolutely. Was there, so, and I also note um, that I've, I've provided your community association with the <coughs> commitment from the city and from hydro to move the hydro poles back so if i'm kicked out of office which i probably will be in about a year and a half uh be sure to hold on to that letter mari uh so that uh, you can make sure that those poles are put back um and then the i thought there was going to be a bit of consultation around the landscaping details as they reinstate um reinstate the the the, the grassy area of workman Yes, Councillor, we're still quite a bit of ways yes, away from that, but uh, certainly there are plans to show the community what is being planned in terms of final replanting and reinstating around the station areas. Okay. Um, one of the frustrations, of course, of, of working through the Triple P is that sometimes those consultation opportunities are limited. The, uh, the suggestion that I would have for residents working with the community association is if there are things that you would like to see in there, uh, we can't guarantee that uh, we can get Kev to do them, but it would be good to have some idea of, of what some of the top priorities are. Yep. 
that we can provide those in as they're designing it. A lot of the work on these P3 projects, and I encountered this was stage one, um, is that it's sort of constantly shifting and they're, they're, things are not finalized, like they don't have a, a final plan that they, um, uh, you know, the city has told them to do. Uh, but if we, if we have some idea of what it is that your priorities are with respect to the landscaping details, uh, you know, I would like to get those in front of Kev and the city um, at some reasonable time. We obviously do have lots and lots of time left. Okay, uh, next question. How long will you be at the former Fendor site? I heard you are renting the site from Uniform. And that's that's 335 Roosevelt, is that correct? I am not sure. I am good on the addresses, but not so much maybe what the use might have been on a building. But yes, at the 335 Roosevelt site where there is a um, development application Kev does, Kev, the contractor does have a, a lands agreement with the property owner there. Okay. Next question. I pretty much addressed it. Will the trees greenery along the south side of Workman from the bridge to the new station be replanted once the bus bridge is removed? Yes. And there will be opportunities for uh, consultation throughout that. Next question. Um, I pity the poor people just past Churchill who will have buses running just past their front door and under their balconies. So this would be the uh, Tega building, 2100 Scott. Uh, is there sound barrier planned for them? So there's no noise mitigation measures planned at that location. Um, the roadway will be separated from the building by the uh, temporary multi-use pathway, which will be sort of in between the two. But part of the, the challenge when there is a high rise building right next to a construction site, or especially, or in this case where construction impact is putting buses a lot closer to the building, uh, the noise mitigation measures that are available can only go so high. We can't take it up past really the equivalent of the height of two or three floors. So there is not anything planned at that location. This is, uh, it's the same answer we've uh, we've had for, for several years now. We've been consulting um, on this one, so nothing has changed there. It is uh, just for those of you who um, uh, are in the Tega building uh, that has been taken over by CCOC, uh, which is, I think, great news. Um, and the uh, city staff and I and others uh, uh, are dealing directly with the LRT team and have been for a couple of years now. I've been in that building a few times. On the Our next question uh, from Roland Dorsey, a protected intersection at Island Park Drive is uh, very welcome. Currently, northbound drivers on Island Park Drive seek to slip by the car at the intersection if that car is waiting at a red light in order to turn east. Will the protected intersection be designed in a way that prevents that dangerous practice, which sometimes sees cars driving onto the curb to slip by? Slip by driving is a high-risk move. It's often blind to cars turning east from the south side of the intersection and requires a quick response to avoid a collision. So yes, I can confirm with uh, the new protected intersection, the geometry and the design does uh, prevent or make it very hard for this to happen. Along with additional signage, this, uh, this is a safety precaution that is mitigated from the protective intersection design. Excellent, thank you, Bowden. Will the pedestrian and cycle crossover be maintained at the Dominion Station, Kitchizibi Station area? Uh, I was I'm, on mute. <laughs> I'd be happy to have Jessica answer the question. I'm just wondering uh, what specific crossover we're talking about. Now that there is a uh, pedestrian crossing of the transitway at the signal at the Sir John and McDonald Parkway, and that will be maintained at all times. It's 
one of the two detour routes we have in place or available to pedestrians uh, given the removal of the Roosevelt Bridge, the other one being uh, on the east side at Churchill. So both of those paths across the transitway will be in place um, at all times. And of course, we will also have access um, available to the uh, the platform that will be for Dominion Station in the westbound direction. Um, I don't know if uh, Bowdoin has the plans in front of him and, and can remind us if there's going to be a crossing of the transitway at the station itself. But um, irrespective, there will be many ways to get across the transitway throughout all phases of construction. I don't have them right in front of me, but I can discuss with Jessica after and we can post that online. Excellent. Great, thank you. From uh, Diego Garcia, is the work happening currently at Berkeley related to LRT? They seem to be opening manholes, digging, and closing. I can speculate. By all means. Uh, I would guess that uh, th there is some work that will ultimately be done on um, Berkeley, I believe that's the street that we have scoped to add a sidewalk on towards the end of the project. If they're getting into manholes and then closing them, they're probably measuring inverts for pipes the distance below the surface, which will help them in their detailed design. Thank you. Uh, Guitain LeMay, will there be a bus stop where the current Dominion Station is during construction of the new train station? So there will not be a bus stop exactly where the existing Dominion Station is, but there will be a Dominion Station bus stop just, um, I guess, yeah, just north of where the existing Dominion Station is during the transitway detour. So buses that are coming from Lincoln Fields will continue to stop at Dominion before continuing on to the new detour on their way to Westboro Station. Right, right. And vice versa, exactly. Right, right. Okay. From Klaus Belsner, please show a map of the new temporary multi-use path being constructed between Churchill and Dominion Station. So I don't have a map of the exact alignment of this map, just because it is temporary while they build the the bus only roadway and will be shifting again slightly but it's fairly straightforward i walked it this afternoon actually and it was easy to find my way as a pedestrian between churchill avenue and dominion station but putting together something showing the whole area is something we can do tom to yeah, post absolutely. on the website as yep. an answer. Yep, absolutely. When the temporary road goes in, the the cyclist obviously can't cross the new temporary road. So will the cycling pedestrian path go on the south side of the new temporary transitway road? Yes, yes. I believe that is the, <laughs> yeah, that is the correct answer. It's it's the only answer and I just want to yeah because yeah, this like essentially they would have to cross the transitway where it cross where it crosses over the cold transitway. So keep it on the south side. It'll connect to Roosevelt. Yeah, like it, it can't uh, it can't keep its current configuration entirely because the current path is to the north of that road, which would imply crossing it, which can't happen. That is absolutely correct, and that so the, getting people to the south side, I think, is going to be managed at the to be signalized uh, Churchill and Scott intersection. And then that's uh, how we'll most safely get people to that south side um, while keeping the bus service uh, you know, moving smoothly. And like you say, Councillor, absolutely. Yeah, and I hadn't thought of that, but that's gonna, I'll be curious to see those plans. So that path will come out um, somewhere around Mose, and then it'll need to, people will need to cross Scott and the temporary transit way in order to get onto the multi-use path that is on the north side 
I, I mean, I can reverse those that, directions. That, that, is, that is correct. And so this is where the that protected intersection uh, comes into play. And so if you are a cyclist and say you're standing, you're in front of Moe's and you want to get to the north side pathway to head east, you'll use the, the cycle track and cross ride to cross across Churchill to the southeast corner and then to the north to the uh, to the pathway, so it's going to be two crossings either way. But this way, you're following in the same direction of traffic and using all those extra safety features. Or if you're eastbound, you'll also just be able to continue on the south side of Scott on the new cycling facility that's being built. Uh, you're absolutely correct, of course, Council. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Our next question uh, about the Goldenrod Bridge. What's the timing for that bridge to become into service? Assume that the existing bridge will come down soon after. So I believe the timing hasn't been completely confirmed yet uh, when this will happen, but it will be uh, by the time that the Scott Street BRT detour is in effect, which is next spring. Uh, Dom asks, do you have the elevation plan of the final station at the current Dominion station? So this was a question uh, that we got at the last info session, Tom, and would have mm -hmm. been posted with the first batch on the website. So there's no elevation plan that is available to be shared, but I can say that the height to the roof of the future Kitchissippi station is five meters approximately okay and uh, judy lincoln from the uh, bia it would be great to see uh, those plans for both stations and i am guessing that we will have i mean obviously this meeting is about the detour um i, I think it's safe to say that we will have more uh public webinars about the station themselves uh when those plans are available is that uh Yes, Tom, and as I mentioned for that earlier question, sort of touching on the station plaza, I'll put together what I do have to share right now, and we'll add it to the post uh, for this meeting as well. Okay, excellent. And Dom asks how high the station will be. I think you said five meters. Uh, Klaus Beltzner, can you provide an, out, uh, an update on the planned multi-use path connecting the Westboro station um, with Lanark and the Metropole building. So Is that I'm, the connection that goes behind? Yeah, behind Westboro Station curves around. Uh, it's in pretty bad disrepair right now, I, I, so particularly I around the bend. Uh, I can't provide an update, so hopefully Jessica can, but I just wanted to make sure I, I could visualize what we were talking about. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not sure that it is at least from the uh, stage two side of things considered uh, something that is planned, but it was included in the uh, connectivity review that was undertaken last year. And that was listed as something that a feasibility assessment would be conducted for. So looking at, you know, what would this entail in terms of design? How much would this cost? You know, what would we have to do to get the contractor to implement this? So I will get an update on where we are, whether that feasibility assessment was completed and what the status is of that. And we'll include that in the questions to be answered on the website, Tom. Okay, that sounds good. Our next question. Uh, has the pedestrian access to the Tega building been resolved with the transitway running through their front driveway? Yes, so as we've sort of been touching on so far, the multi-use pathway that currently runs between Churchill and Dominion Station that is normally, um, you know, as north as it can go before you drop down to the transitway trench, that multi-use pathway is going to be maintained throughout construction, but shifted to the south closer to the Tega building because the bus only roadway is going to take up the space immediately abutting the drop off to the transitway trench. 
So if anything, the multi-use pathway is connecting into the pedestrian access to the Tega building. It's going to become closer. Okay. And Stephen Davidson <clears throat> about Workman, I'm, I'm asking about the landscaping because we used to have a treed area across the street from us. It would be nice to have that again. Um, absolutely would be. And that's duly noted. And that will be part of the, uh, the consultation when we, we figure out the landscaping. And if I may, yeah. There's a fairly significant budget associated with reinstating the landscape, like it accommodates trees. Yeah. And I think we'll we'll see some nice improvements yep, there. I think so. I think so. Yes, the replacement ratio for trees that have been removed is two to one. Yeah. Uh, but of course, some places where trees were removed, something else was put over that space. So a tree can't be replanted in that exact area. So there will be, if anything, um, they'll be looking to make up that ratio in areas where there is room to plant things. And this area along Workman around Kitchesabee Station is one of those areas where there will still be green space where things can be planted, where that replacement ratio can be made up. So um, that's good I'm, news. Yeah, no, and I, I know, I, I'm actually very confident that that will be uh, properly reinstated and nice. Um, I, I do want to just express some quick nervousness around some of the language that's being used with respect to consultations on the landscaping. Um, it hasn't been my experience through the P3 that um, by the time the builder shows us a plan, they're generally pretty far down the path. So my caution to residents just having been through this before is um, express your concerns and, and put your desires uh, on paper so that we can provide those to the builder. Um, building an LRT is not quite like a regular city project with um, regular check-ins and showing people, taking feedback, changing the plans according to public feedback. Um, the, the, the P3 tends to imply um, less public participation and public influence over some of the final plans. So, um, so yeah, I would I would just encourage people working with the community association to say what we want, um, so that uh, the builder has that when they're going to design their uh, design their landscape and such. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, next question. I saw that the LRT will be at surface level from Kitchesabee Station until after it passes beyond Rochester Field. This means the LRT will need to go up quickly, then go back down quickly into the tunnel. Have difficulty understanding the rationale for this. You can skip this question. It's out of scope for the discussion. It's still a great question, and we'll get the answer for you. Absolutely, Tom. And this is something else. There was a similar question asked at the previous information session that we did back in April. So I already know where part of the answer is located. And there is a visual aid as well. Okay, excellent. Uh, Diego Garcia, comment about the landscaping. We've uh, obviously uh, just touched on it, but uh, Diego says that landscaping is key to the neighborhood. Dominion Station is within the neighborhood with houses just across. Neighbors would really appreciate a consultation process when the time comes, not just sharing final design. We had mature trees uh, at the pick location for the station, and those were cut down two years ahead of construction. We have to find a way to incorporate greenery back into the area. Thank you for that. Stephen Davidson is asking, do you have drawings plans to share related to the exact temporary transitway routing and temporary Dominion bus stop that will exist during the completion of the LRT system? So I, I can answer the routing question uh, rather easily. From a bus routing perspective, nothing will change. Uh, every bus that goes from Lincoln Fields to Dominion to Westboro and vice versa today will do exactly the same thing. Um, and, and so the routing will be unchanged. Um, now, the exact details of the temporary Dominion station that we're building, um, those are, you know, still in the finalization process. I'm not sure what we are able to uh, share publicly at this point, but rest assured that um, you know, we are building it to 
standards applicable for a transit way station and you know, we're going to be able to stop the right number of buses along uh, the platform itself um, and it's going to be effectively just north of where the existing one is so I, I hope that's enough detail to satisfy for for the time being but as we uh, do finalize that i'm sure that more can be shared with the public uh, Brian Miller asks, will Deadhead buses be rerouted so they don't run along the Scott Street do detour? Uh, doing this will reduce pressure on Scott Street and the temporary road. My favorite kind of question, uh, because the answer is yes. Uh, that, that's something that we thought about uh, quite extensively um, during the preliminary engineering phase. And one of the things that makes it possible for the uh, detour to work operationally speaking um, is that we are not going to be running superfluous uh, empty buses along the route that needs to remain there for um, for the ones that are in service. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, from Diego, a comment uh, from my neighbor on Berkeley who asked the construction crew directly, the work on Berkeley is not related to LRT. It was related to pipe works. Feedback for the city, uh, a construction notice is expected even for emergency repairs. Okay, thank you. Don Crockford asks, when the detour is up and running, how many buses will move east-west on Scott Street in a day? So the answer I don't have a number for, but I think Campbell, what you're going to say is that it's the exact same number of buses that currently run along the transit way in the trench. You would think so. Um, however, um, o OC Transpo does their, uh, basically their routing design for the, the period that will start, they have service change dates throughout the year, and one of those service change dates is in June. So we align major changes to transitway uh, service like a closure with those dates so that we don't need to go through this arduous process of rejigging the whole schedule more times than necessary. So they're going to finalize that number, um, likely about three months prior to the, the date itself. And that number is going to be reflective of all sorts of things you know i could have told you the number pretty exactly uh before the pandemic but now we're going to be responsive to the um, reality of what the ridership is on the service uh on the system given people's perhaps varied work arrangements uh so we just don't know oc transpo will be able to make uh more information known likely in the early spring of next year but the uh you know, there could be a few less, there could be a few more. Uh, it's likely to be very similar. And that number is, you know, more than a thousand, less than 2000. But uh, I, I would not be, uh, you know, doing justice to my colleagues at OC Transpo if uh, I didn't allow them to, to give you that answer themselves. Okay. Thank you. Next question. Will the site at the intersection of Roosevelt South Side Side and uh, Transit Way, where the old industrial buildings were taken down, will that site be a construction staging zone for the LRT? I believe that's 335. That, that is, yes. Roosevelt again. So, yes, it is currently a construction zone for LRT and will be as they build this detour. And then afterwards, as I understand it, there's a development application there. So there's going to be construction of a new building potentially. I'm not sure what the status of that application is. I'm actually expecting in um, this autumn that the developer is going to move ahead with the planning committee date uh, for a development proposal of two 12 story buildings. Uh, so keep an eye on my newsletter for uh, further details of that. It's, it's obviously been an ongoing discussion in the, uh, in the community and, uh, and coming to a planning committee decision fairly soon. 
Okay, next question. Where will the documents and additional details be posted following this meeting? Uh, thank you. So, uh, KitchissippiWard.ca, uh, that's uh, our office's website. Uh, and Jessica, will uh, stage two uh, website as well? Um, yes, we could probably do something on the, the stage two website, but yeah. it would probably be easier to find <laughs> on oh, your ward. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt, KitchissippiWard.ca. I'm just yeah. actually going to post that in the chat to everyone. Thank you. Next question. You said there wouldn't be a sound barrier between the bus lane and the Tega building, but there are homes on Wilmot that are backing onto the bus lane. Will the noise barrier be placed there? So there are no plans for any noise mitigation on the the south side of the existing transitway, so there won't be any west of the Tega building to the bus bridge either. Okay, thank you. Um, so as far as the link where previous session, I believe we're thinking about the uh, McKellar Park uh, session. Um, that's on our YouTube channel, in our, our Ward uh, YouTube channel, and um, there were 80 questions, I believe, at least, on that day. We have posted the first batch, and that is, again, at KitchissippiWard.ca. I'll get that up in the chat as well, Tom. I've just okay, thank pulled you. it up from the website. Uh, okay, when the Scott Street Transway detour goes into operation in June 2022, is that June 2022 date to coincide with OC Transpo summer schedule change, which is probably late June 2022? Yes. Okay. For the reasons discussed previously. It, yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, Roland. <laughs> I'm going to ask it. I don't care. Uh, minus the teddy bear is the banner above Jeff's head, an image of Scott Street once the bus detour begins. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes? I don't know. Right. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> fewer, fewer dump trucks. No, cement fewer, trucks. Yes. Fewer cement trucks. Um pending the, the completion of the uniform project. <laughs> okay. Uh, David Sewell asks, the new detour runs very close to the north end of Winston Avenue, but is not accessible because of a closed gate. Is it possible to have that gate left open uh, during the detour? We're certainly working on it. Yes, so that is one of the things that has already been identified now that work has started in the stage two office. We're trying to figure out what we can do about that gate to get it open. So if there are challenges in there, like I know I've been asking for a couple of weeks, um, uh, let me know what the, the, the hurdles are here. Uh, I'd, I'd love to work with you folks to try to get that open. Like yeah. obviously it's just an escalating battle at this point where residents cut the wire and then Kev rewires it shut. It, I assume that Kev will take sturdier measures. Residents will become more determined to keep it open. Rather than this escalating thing, which is just dumb and, and wasting their time, let's just leave it open if we can. So whatever I can do to help on that, please let me know. Stephen Davidson asks, will there be a reduced bus speed limit for the temporary portion of the transitway along Workman Avenue to ensure safety and reduce noise. How are transitway speed limits enforced? So uh, another good question. I, I'm, I'm enjoying these questions. Uh, transitway speed limits are enforced by uh, OC Transpo. So they have, they monitor their driver's speeds um, both through having uh, there are special constables out basically setting uh, speed traps for, for buses, much in the same way uh, that the police do for, for drivers. That sort of enforcement does get done regularly and can be done if there's ever concerns, right? Um, and, you know, then there's also simply uh, 
enforcement that happens naturally because there are GPS units on the buses, and if you're showing up early, that's uh, not something that uh, that is good. So it, it's monitored and it's very easy to address. But luckily, um, in this case, I'm not expecting that we're going to run into excessive um, speed problems there. I mean, first of all, it is separated from Workman Avenue, which is nice. But from a, a noise perspective, um, there's a geometric constraint uh, with the bridge that will take you over the transitway trench at Roosevelt, both in terms of the, the radius on the horizontal curve uh, that will need to be applied as well as the, the vertical profile of the road, which effectively means that buses will not be able to uh, drive very quickly, either coming into the station or when they leave the station, they're going to be accelerating, but accelerating towards a spot where they would have to slow down. So the, the posted speed limit, as it were, is likely to be 50 kilometers an hour. I don't expect that buses traveling in that section will regularly get up above 35 or 40. And if they do, we know what to do about it. Excellent. Thank you. Um, okay, will the traffic pattern of buses at the intersection of the Transit Way and the Ottawa River Parkway, by the way, can we rename the S-Jam to something else, please, uh, be essentially the same as it is right now? For example, how the buses come on and off the parkway. So the uh, the parkway formerly known as Ottawa, and maybe one day uh, again to be known that way, uh, that intersection at uh, the, the parkway and the transitway is going to operate exactly the same as it does now. It's effectively going to be switched or like shifted um, maybe 10 or 15 meters over, but the signalization and the phasing scheme for that intersection is identical. Just a quick thank you for this session. I like the quick, informative, sometimes candid responses. Very helpful. Helps to build confidence in the whole process. Well, thank you for that comment and thank you for being here. Yeah, that's amazing to hear, thank you. Um, so uh, please share the City of Ottawa LRT website where the April info session was posted, where the questions were answered. The Kitchissippi website is not easy to navigate either. Um, KitchissippiWard.ca, you go right to it. Uh, I believe it's the fourth one down and the blog post is there. I, I'm pretty sure it's fairly high up. So yeah, that um, should, that's uh, what I posted in the chat to everyone yeah, earlier. Apps. So the link is right there under yeah. April 29th. Info Excellent. Thank you. The, uh, I'll just make a quick note. The, I put the materials up um, on my website. I don't work for the city of Ottawa and I'm not constrained by uh, some of the um, requirements that they have. Any materials that get posted to the city of Ottawa website have to be accessible and they have to be bilingual. So oftentimes uh, if we just want to sort of get information out to people, we wind up using my website rather than the city's. Um, I'm taking a look at that package that was uh, recently dumped onto uh, our website from the previous. That would have been even longer to get up onto the city website yeah. by the time they'd made it fully compliant with all the city's requirements. So we'll, we'll continue to use the, um, uh, the Kitchissippi Ward website to, uh, to get information out to people uh, in as expedient a fashion as we can. And we have just uh, one last thank you from Yaprak and Rob. Thank you. Very informative session. And again, thank you for being here. That right now. Oh, one more. Spoke too soon. Okay. Stephen Davidson. Th oh, thank you for your time. Also looking forward to additional sessions in the future, especially for the residents who live in very close proximity to the temporary transitway along Workman Avenue and the new Kitchissippi station. I especially feel reassured about the trees. Excellent. Yeah, Tom, I think I'll add that, you know, working together, the stage two office and the counselor's office with community associations, we're ready to really do these information sessions kind of on an on-demand yep. basis. Absolutely. However, especially right now, there isn't always new information available every time that an info session is scheduled or every time a, a group might like to have an information session. So sometimes we might just say, you know, we'll have that information at this time and that would be a good time to schedule something. But certainly having lots of these in the future is definitely the plan. Excellent. 
Well, uh, like an auctioneer. I, oh, there's one more. Okay, for uh, future Kitchen Sippy Station, you said earlier the roof would be five meters height. Could you please specify if it's from the platform or from the ground level? That is something that I will confirm with the station team because I do not want to speak out of turn and want to provide very clear answer and confirmation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tom, I have one question. Yes, absolutely, Councillor. Go I've ahead. I've been waiting very patiently. You have. <laughs> no, um, with respect to the signalization, particularly at Churchill and um, Scott, if that signal is put in sooner, can it be turned on sooner? You mentioned it wouldn't start until the uh, the detour started, but I know like we're all anticipating eagerly having that uh, signal in operation. I was just going to say we were ending on such a, a, a <laughs> note. Um, Councillor, that's something that we can absolutely look into. I can't think of a reason off the top of my head um, as to why if construction was complete and the signal was done, uh, we couldn't uh, turn it on prior to the beginning of the detour. In fact, I can think of some reasons why it would be advantageous uh, to do so, just in terms of getting general traffic used to that uh, situation, as well as providing those benefits um, of having a protected intersection there. Sometimes it's, it can be a little bit weird having a protected intersection built and then still operating it as an all-way stop. There could be issues with that. So uh, without saying anything uh, that will trap me, I uh, will say I, I'm bullish about it um, and we will absolutely work with your office to uh, to make that happen unless uh, I get told and, and I learn something new and figure out all the reasons why it's a bad idea. So. I, I take that as uh, as without prejudice. Thank you. In, in, in my experience, though, uh, we, we should be good. So let, let's keep the conversation open. And agree with the councillor. Uh, this last comment, it's a tricky intersection for pedestrian and cyclists. Get to, best to get people accustomed to it sooner rather than later. It's hard to argue that for sure. Okay. Uh, so, like an auctioneer, I will say going, going, going once, going twice. And I believe that is it for our questions. I love it. Thank so you very much, everyone, for joining us. Final words, Jeff? Yeah. No, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, feel free to reach out to either Jessica or myself with any further questions. Um, uh, I, I don't feel as though we've gotten into a great rhythm yet with respect to communications. I know the stage one was was also a bit of time to get it moving in the um, uh, a really free flowing, but uh, I, I know that we're going to get there. So thank you, Campbell. Thank you, Bowden. Thank you, Jessica, for joining us. Tom, thank you very much for uh, for doing a great job with tonight's um, thank uh, you. session. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank Have you, a good Professor. night. Thank Have you. an excellent night, everybody. Good night.